And okay, welcome back. What I'm doing today is Apra's Kedgeri. Brilliant breakfast food. You can have it for lunch, you can have it for dinner. It's have it for supper. Have it any time of the day because it is so, so easy. And it's one of the best ones for camping because you use microwave rice. Well, as my learned cameraman has just said to me, huh, I haven't got a microwave. You don't need a microwave for this. Give it a bit of a bash, break it all up. It's going to be going in there in two seconds. These are the ingredients you need. Pack of long grain rice, tin of tuna, a couple of eggs, some onions and some curry powder. I use mild curry powder, you don't want too much. Even if you've got a really um, spicy tongue, you know, sometimes you can destroy the flavour of the fish. So don't go too overboard. It's meant to just bring out the nice flavour of the rice, all right? And that's it. Need some water. Let's cook. <laughs> okay, first thing you need to do is remember, as I said to you in previous vlogs, is preparing your pan. And with Kedgeri, you do this with oil. You do need oil. Now, of course, when you're camping, you don't need to take a great big one like this. What have you? But the most important thing is, is that you have oil. Olive oil is the best. And all you do, bit in the corner there, and using a piece of kitchen roll because you don't want to use this kitchen roll for anything else. So you know, again, permeating into the rough surfaces, getting into every part. That pan is now prepared. All right. Simple as. So, click on the gas and let's get started. Using chopped onions, prepared these earlier, you can actually, if you want, you can get some fantastic um, bags now. You know, sandwich bags, snappy bags, clip bags. If you want, you can pre-chop your onions and take them with you to save any faffing about. But for this to work, you've got to plan the meal. It's no point, I remember years and years ago, the very first time that I camped, to be honest with you, I went to Shell Island near Barmouth, and the partner I had at the time, we, had, we didn't have a clue. We did not have a clue. We used a baking tin as our cooking tin because we didn't. We were too tight and too skint, I think, as well, to go and get a proper pan. And what did we do? We did the same that everybody else on our camping road seemed to do. We took beans, we took onions, we took a block of cheese and we took bread. Boring! You just can't do it. And plus you can't cook on an oven pan, so don't try that one. So now, it's, it's, it's great for me now, when I look at how far I've come, I couldn't even cook beans properly without burning the bottom of the pan and everything else. So, you get your onions in, you give them a whirl round and you heat them through. Really important that they get the heating going through it. Then what you do is you add, you're all going to go, oh, the kedgeri. Yes, the kedgeri. You add some water. To the water, you then add, yes, we have no microwave, rice. Now, one that I, a rice system that I use and I use this a lot, is boiling the bag. And in one of my recipes that I'm blogging later on, I'm actually going to be using boiling the bag rice. Um, because boiling the bag rice takes, if you're doing it on conventional means, because remember when you're cooking outside, when you're cooking outside, it's, um, there's a problem with microwave rice, it sticks. Um, heating times really are much quicker. Or they, they can be if you're using certain cooking systems, much slower. So you you know, boiling the bag rice will actually on one of these gas heaters in an enclosed bag, with you putting it into boiling hot water beforehand, about eight to ten minutes to cook, which is nothing because you can put your boiled rice on, go in, you know, sort out your bedroom, pull down the lilos, go and strangle the children disconnect them from the front the fences that they've climbed and they weren't meant to. You know, you can do an awful lot in eight minutes, kill the husband, bury him in the back of the van. Hey, um, just think, after all that hard work, you have a tasty kedgeree. So, so boy in the bag is a good system. But this is good because it's partly cooked already. Now, some of you 
and I've seen you people, I know you exist because I've seen you have electric hookups with a microwave. So you could even microwave your rice and put it in. It's not a problem. What I do, I do it like this. This is, and just the grains will all separate in a minute anyway, but I just like to help them along. What I'm going to do to this now, I'm just going to add that just keep cooking through. I wish we had smell vision because I wish you could smell this, but that onion just mixed with that rice. I love onion. If you don't like onion, I think you're stuffed, basically. Go down the chippy. That'd be a good one, you know. Get your fish and chips. However, if you are watching your weight, you're a Weight Watchers or a Slimming World person, this it has no sins. This is a no sin meal, so if you're following your swimming world plan, you know, camping, there's no excuse. Your food can just be just as good as if you were at home, alright? People seem to think when you go camping, it's got to be stodgy, it's got to be uh, quick, it's got to be easy. No, it hasn't. It, it, your food is easy anyway, because it's cut better. You know, you can't beat it. I mean, I'm a... For a lot of you out there, you know that I'm actually a swordmaster and I have a, a reenactment group called the House of the Black Star. And we do a lot of outdoor cooking because we have to for the group. We do a lot of medieval um, recipes. And that is something else that I'm going to be cooking as well. I'm going to be doing in later vlogs medieval and pirate, Georgian, and uh, a few Victorian recipes as well that I've managed to find recently, which I'm quite pleased with. Right. So, two minutes in and my babble, here we go, that now, onions are softened and this now is just starting to stick, not what you really want, so you've got to move quickly now, you get your tuna fish and you keep a little bit of the moisture from the tin, really important because you need that moisture to send this round, so you pop your tuna in. Like so. Now your eggs, you can boil them up before you come on holiday. You, you know, I always have because we keep chickens. Um, you know, we've got a little bit of uh, got. Well, I say chicken. We have. We've still got chickens. The fox had three of them the other night. Git. So, but. I like to have a few hard boiled ones in the back of the van if I'm going away for a couple of nights. Even if I don't eat them, you can always feed them to the ducks. And now I'm going to put in a liberal amount of curry powder. Again, what you're not smelling is this wonderful aroma. See, I like, you know, there's people out there who quite like their food wet. I like my food, especially my kajiri, quite sloppy, uh, quite dry. Not sloppy, what am I talking about? So now you really coat, coat it in every step of the way. So all this rice now, you can see the rice is fluffed up quite lovely. Fluff that in. Remember with a cast iron pan, <laughs> the handle does get hot. Just do it like that. Bring it round, like so. As that's cooking, your eggs, they will heat up in the, the kajiri as you're doing it. And then you just layer your eggs around it, like so, allowing the heat. You don't want, they're already cooked, so you're only trying to warm them through slightly. That's all you're doing, warming them through. Bring it through there. Like so, a little bit of salt to bring out some flavour, and there you have it. Afterwards, morning, afternoon, evening, and in between, kajiri, hit fab and ruby.